Hi, welcome back. This is Dr. Walker again. I'm talking this week about vitamin D and blood pressure. And I've been meaning to do this now for a while and um, I just did not get a chance until, uh, until really today to look at this and talk a little about it. So we've known a lot about vitamin D as it relates to uh, strong bones and prevention of osteoporosis and some brain effects, some cardiac effects, some heart effects that it has, and also its effects on lots of hormones in, uh, in our bodies. Little though had been known about um, the effects of uh, uh, vitamin D on things like blood pressure. So I pulled this um, chart down from Google, and it's just sort of helped me explain What's be happening? So let's start with the kidneys. With the kidneys, and so in the kidneys we have these things called the JG cells. JG cells uh, are used to create this hormone called renin. Renin is important because it takes this other hormone from the liver and converts it to this other thing, angiotensin uh, one. Angiotensin one flows around the blood. It does uh, its thing, and uh, it waits essentially until this angiotensin converting enzyme ACE. Uh, uh, converts it from angiotensin 1 to angiotensin 2. Angiotensin 2 um, has strong, we call sympathetic, that fight or flight thing we learned about a long time ago, uh, high sympathetic tones in our body. So what it does is sort of all those sympathetic th things to include increase of blood pressure, water retention, uh, sodium uh, retention as well, things of constriction, that's what it does. So this entire thing, uh, uh, the end of which um, is essentially increasing your blood pressure. Vitamin D has been found recently to have profound effects on sort of all of these things. And you think possibly mostly, most of the effects happens in the kidney, but I suspect it happens, has effects on all of these, uh, all of these systems. And what they found was that people with blood pressure, high blood pressure, many of them, more than half of them had um, low vitamin D levels. And I've said before in the past that probably 80% of the U.S. population is vitamin D deficient. 80%. So it, it, it makes sense then that with as much diabetes and hypertension that we have, that vitamin D may play a role uh, in this. Importance of vitamin D and essentially how do we get vitamin D and how do we get enough of it. For vitamin D, uh, most of it or much of it is uh, it, it, gained from um, sun sunlight, converting uh, the inactive form of vitamin D to the active form. Again, vitamin D is a huge immunomodulator, which means that it fights infections and pathogens and all of those things. And a very this is a very uh, uh, profound thing that's required in fighting things like COVID-19. I think I've said that before in several other videos. So low levels, though, again, because we're not being exposed to the sun a whole lot, we're staying indoors a whole lot more, uh, causes us to have increased blood pressure, plays a role as well in diabetes and asthma and other inflammation around the system. And again, much of this deficiency that we have is because most of us are now staying, for example, indoors. And when we do go, go outside, and we didn't do a lot of that in this, this past summer because of COVID-19, we do things like we wear sunblock. And now it's winter time, obviously, and so again, because it's cold outside, we stay indoor. All of which plays a role in us being sort of vitamin D deficient, plays a role as well in us having chronic inflammation, chronic things like hypertension, blood pressure issues. So this is a chart that I, I, I pulled on again, sort of talking about and, and, and the reason um, that many of us have problems with COVID-19 is because, again, and I said this before, low vitamin D levels that many of us have. Lots of uh, reasons, again, because we're sort of staying inside uh, more, we're staying away from the sun a whole lot more. So this chart, chart just shows you that people with um, high vitamin D levels typically do not have a problem. And again, I said this before, if a person has high vitamin D levels, if they were to have COVID, many of them would be, quote, asymptomatic, would not know that they had COVID to begin with. Very few of them are hospitalized, and very few of them actually die from vitamin uh, die from COVID with high vitamin D levels. Very few people that will happen to. So again, important that you get your vitamin D levels uh, up to normal. People who are at risk for vitamin D deficiency: dark skin people. Apparently, the melanin in in our skin reduces the vitamin D conversion. 
people who are older in the nursing home, sedimentary lifestyle, for example, they stay sort of indoors as well a whole lot uh, more than they used to when they were younger and outside on the beach or uh, outside you know, playing games and so forth. Uh, people with chronic conditions who include things like Crohn's disease, celiac disease, some of the vitamin D that we get comes from food like salmon and those kind of things. And so if you have the chronic uh, GI concern, gastrointestinal concerns, then you run the risk of not absorbing the vitamin D levels from your food as well. Also, people with um, uh, high BMI, uh, obese folks, um, they tend to as well have a problem with uh, storing vitamin D in that uh, a lot of the vitamin D gets extracted from the from the blood by the fat cells and not used where we need to have it uh, utilized. Chronic disease again, cancer, chronic inflammation from smoking, chronic obstructive pulmonary disorder from COPD, chronic kidney disease as well. So any sort of chronic uh, disease that tends to use up all your vitamin D. So in other words, vitamin D levels are low to begin with and you have a chronic disorder the vitamin D levels are uh, utilized pretty quickly and you become depleted pretty fast. And so you have even more problems with uh, a lot of these things, again, to include hypertension. Again, reason as to why you need to have your vitamin D levels up to normal and up to par. And I'll, I'll add one thing. One, uh, if you look at this list of uh, things that we have here, um, these are all a list of people who have uh, concerns or problems with COVID-19, right? A lot of these people, dark-skinned people, older people, greater than 65 years old, people with chronic infection, people with cancer, COPD, lung problems, smoking, asthma, any of these chronic inflammation will have a problem with COVID-19. And again, because COVID-19 also begins to de deplete the uh, your vitamin D levels. So if your levels are already low and you have these conditions, then you run the risk of depleting your vitamin D levels even more and having more of a problem uh, with with uh, uh, chronic disorders to include uh, things like COVID-19. So that's the discussion I want to have uh, today. Thanks for listening. So if, if there are things that you do or um, would like to discuss, let me know in the comment box below. Um, but again, um, you can look at one of my other videos in terms of what I take in terms of vitamin D and in, in fact, my list my drug du jour, if you would, um, uh, as it relates to what I take for uh, COVID-19 and um, sort of chronic disorders, how much uh, vitamin D you should take, how much vitamin C you should take in, in, uh, in my other videos as well. Uh, if there are things that you're doing that you'd like to discuss with us in terms of what you're doing to stay safe in this COVID-19 uh, pandemic, let me know as well in the comment box below. Uh, and if you like the content in terms of what we're talking about in these videos, then please also subscribe. Again, thanks for listening, Dr. Walker. Uh, be well. Thank you.